hello and welcome to Worship on the Web with St Michael's Church in Braintree. Well, we're back in St Michael's Church building each Sunday at 10am for a weekly service. If you'd like to join us for one of those, do please pre-book a seat by Thursday midnight and you can do that either via the booking form on our website or by leaving an answer phone message on our office phone and we'll let you know on the Friday whether you've, you've got a seat. As well, we'll be carrying on with our YouTube pre-recorded services, St Michael's by phone and some services on Zoom. And this evening on Zoom, we've got All Age Tonight. It's at 6.30 p.m. and we're uh, looking at some of Jesus' I Am sayings in John. And we look forward to what Cyril has to share with us when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The Zoom links are all on my, for, for the services are all on my weekly email that goes out on the Saturday. But if you don't receive that and you'd like to join us, then do please get in touch and I'll send you the link. Do please have a look at our weekly notice sheet, as well as details of all the services. There's also details of our annual church meeting coming up at the end of May, and also something new called Garden Socials. Do have a read. Well, over Easter we were thinking about how Jesus died and rose to life. And Jesus ascended then to be with the Father, and he sent his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit transformed the early disciples and many, many others. And we look forward to what Jennifer has to share with us later on as she speaks about the marks of the early church. But as we begin, let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus' life and death and resurrection. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who comes and lives in his followers. Lord, we pray as we worship you today that we will sense your spirit in us and among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Graham is kindly leading our service today. Let me hand over to Graham. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nigel. And may I offer my welcome to you all to this WOW session. We're going to sing to start. We're going to sing a hymn from quite a long while ago. It's Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Please use the words on the screen to join in.
it's time now to think about whether we have anything to confess to God about. It shouldn't be very difficult. I think we've always got something to confess about. It's difficult sometimes to confess things to other people. We're frightened of their judgment or we're frightened of looking foolish but with God it's entirely different. The only difficulty we have is being honest. Trying to think of all the things that we've done or not done that we need to ask his forgiveness for. So let's now join together. The words will be on the screen and ask God for forgiveness. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now some words from Nigel and Joe. One of the things that Joe and I find really helpful is to have what we describe as a daily quiet time. That's a time for each of us by ourselves to read a bit of the Bible and pray. We pray together as well, but actually that time alone with the Lord is, is a really helpful time each day. Now, how do you go about having a quiet time? We, we spoke a few months ago about the Bible reading bit and some notes that, that are helpful. But in terms of prayer, the first thing I'd say is this, that it's helpful to have some structure to your quiet time. This is a very simple mnemonic, uh, the, word, the letters of pray. Praise, repent, anyone else, yourself. So to start off, uh, praising God. Joe, what are some of the things that we can praise God for? Well, we can praise God for who he is. So, for example, he's everlasting, he's all-loving, he's ever-present, and um, but also not just praising him about who he is, we can also thank him for all the things that he gives us. Great, thank you. Uh, and actually, when we praise and thank God, it lifts our hearts. The repentance is about saying sorry and every day I have things to, that I, I need to come and, and repent of, turn away from. The anyone else means that I don't just focus my prayers on, on me and on my needs but actually pray for others. But then it is important to come and pray uh, for, for ourselves as well because God wants to do things in our lives. But Joe, there, there are so many things that we can be praying for. Um, how do you make sure that you don't get just overwhelmed with the number of people that you want to pray for? Yes, well, I find something really helpful. It's um, I've got this file of facts, and in it, I've got um, a place for things and people that I pray for every day, and then for the rest of the week, it's allocated who I pray for, say on a Monday or Tuesday, um, and. Uh, for example, for one of those days, I pray for my godchildren, so um, I use that. But also, um, there is something called a prayer mate. Uh, it's an app, um, and I know people find that helpful to use. Uh, also, uh, the church notice sheet. Um, we have got um, an area in the prayer notice sheet, which has got a list of people to pray for, but also... Just all the various things that are going on at St Michael's, we can incorporate those in our prayers as well. Yes, I've got quite a few uh, prayer diaries of different sorts that I use, uh, and I'll just mention a couple of them to you. Uh, one is, as well as the notice sheet, we have this St Michael's Church monthly prayer cycle. 
So each day there's a, a couple of individuals or families to be praying for, and then three other things. So, some of them are to do with the church, but many are, are worldwide things. So it means that over the month you pray for a whole variety of things. Also, a number of mission organisations ha have prayer diaries, uh, and I, I take a number of those, use a number of those, but one I particularly re recommend to you is this. It's the Care Prayer Diary, a great organisation, uh, and that they have uh, each week a, a different focus to their prayers. Uh, the, for example, I'll just read a couple coming up in May, uh, The Future of Freedoms, the, the attacks there are on our freedoms, The Future of Families, it has a whole variety of, of prayers for each day of the week. And I also get weekly emails from Open Doors and that gives me um, things to be praying for, for the persecuted church each week. But how should we pray? What should we pray for? Let, let me just say a few things. The first is this, that it's good if our prayers are specific rather than just general. So, for example, uh, rather than just praying God bless Granny, it's good to pray that God will bless Granny, but what exactly are you wanting God to do? Uh, and also, not just to pray for physical things, though it's good to pray for physical things, pray for spiritual things as well. That all of us will grow in our knowledge and love of the Lord, that we'll grow in our walk with him. The other thing that can really help us in our prayers, if you've been reading a bit of the Bible, that there's a number of parts of the Bible that can help us to pray. Not least, of course, Jesus' own pattern of prayer for us in the Lord's Prayer. Yes, and if you're not used to praying, start small. And we all will find that some days we might have more time to pray than others, but that's fine. And also, it's really good to be able to plan when you're going to pray each day. Yeah, thank you. I, I once heard it said, I heard this really helpful talk about answers to prayer. Uh, and it suggests you that God answers prayer in four different ways. The first one is, no, I love you too much. That God sees uh, way into the future. He sees things from a timeless perspective. And sometimes he he doesn't give us what we're asking for out of love for us. Sometimes it's no, not yet. We're taught patience. We have to wait for the things that we've been praying for. Uh, many times he says yes. We ask for things and our prayers are answered. And sometimes he says yes and here's more. Sometimes the answers to uh, our prayers are beyond our hopes or imaginings. But let us encourage you to, to try and find a time to spend uh, reading a little bit of the Bible and in prayer with the Lord, uh, and you will find that he, he will bless you as you do so. Lots yet to come. Aid will be bringing our prayers. Janice will read from Acts, and Jennifer will tell us about the early church. But just before that, let's have another hymn, How Can I Be Free From Sin? How can I be free from sin? Lead me to the cross of
Let us pray. Following the death of Prince Philip, we pray for the Queen and the royal family at this sad time. I pray using one of Church of England prayers. God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for the love he shared among us, and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy. Through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for guiding us during this pandemic and the lockdown. We know that many people have found the past month difficult. We pray for your grace and mercy over all who have felt isolated or lost loved ones during or as a result of the pandemic. And as the COVID restrictions are being lifted, we ask that everyone will continue to show restraint and follow the government guidelines. Heavenly Father, source of all goodness, protect us today and the days and weeks ahead. Amen. In these challenging times, we pray for the global church of God. We pray for our leaders, and we pray that they will be united as one, and that there will be no division among them. We pray for the members of the church governing bodies, we pray that they will rise up to, for service and that the work of the church will be done in the name of Christ. Closer to home, we pray for our ministry at St. Michael's Church. Lord Jesus, pour out your grace and blessings upon our leaders and give to them God's message every time they stand up to speak. We also pray that they will have peace, rest, and strength to face the challenges of, of the challenges 
that they face on a daily basis. We also pray for MJK, Make Jesus Known, our mission partners. We pray for wisdom in planning, especially as the team prepare to set up online support for people all over the world, especially in countries like Pakistan, where persecution of Christians is common. We also pray for provision of practical needs as they prepare to set up a filmmaking and recording studio. We ask that all these will provide an opportunity for people to witness and also to hear the message of the cross. We pray this in Jesus' name. We remember those mentioned in our church notice sheet who are unwell, housebound, or bereaved. Heavenly Father, give strength to all those that are weak in body, mind, or spirit. Be with those that care for them. And for the housebound or lonely, Lord, give them the gift of your companionship. To the bereaved, grant to them your peace and comfort and surround them with your love. And finally, a prayer for ourselves. Lord, we pray for ourselves and our Christian brothers and sisters everywhere. May we rejoice in the forgiveness of our sins, so to live in the power of the risen Christ, that we may not sin, but love one another as Christ loved us. And now, to him who is able to do immeasurable more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A prayer. Our Father God, we thank you for your living word. Please speak your word to our hearts and minds now, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, over the past week, since the death of Prince Philip, the word devoted has been used a great deal in the press, on TV, on social media. And I'm sure that, like me, many of you have enjoyed the coverage of his life and especially in seeing his devotion and his obvious love for the Queen. And we could say that a mark of the life of Prince Philip is summed up in that word, devoted. Today, the theme for our talk, based on the passage that has been read from Acts 2, is marks of the early church. And we immediately see that one of the marks of the early church was that they were devoted and verse 42 tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. But can I first just set the scene briefly? 
Peter's preached his Pentecost sermon and those who heard it, it says, were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And those, it says in verse 41, who heard the word were baptised and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And this is the resulting new early church communion community. And all these years later, we gathered together today, are gathering as those who, one way or another, through the Holy Spirit, have been cut to the heart. We are those who have turned away from sin. We've been forgiven because Jesus died. And we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit to live within us. Now, if you're listening to this and this has not been your experience, well, do talk to someone and see how this can be so for you. But can I suggest that we look at the marks of the early church in the following way, seeing how it was for them and how it can be for us today. So we see the early church devoted to the apostles' teaching. We see them devoted to worshipping God. We see them devoted to each other and the community. But firstly, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. And they were devoted in the sense that the Holy Spirit was enabling them to wholeheartedly engage with all that the apostles were teaching. Not out of duty, but out of a real heartfelt desire to understand to learn from the apostles. And it's significant that it was the apostles teaching that they were devoting themselves to. The apostles are those who had been with Jesus during his ministry. They were the ones sent out by Jesus, the ones with the authority of Jesus himself and with the responsibility of fulfilling his last command to them before he ascended into heaven. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them and teaching them. Matthew 28. And now with the power of the Holy Spirit, they were teaching the truth about Jesus to these 3,000 new members of the church. And they were teaching and showing how Jesus had fulfilled all the whole Old Testament scriptures. And it was vital that they were being steeped in the apostles' teaching because they were hearing the absolute truth about Jesus, hearing from those who'd been with Jesus. And the picture of them is, a mark of them is, that they couldn't get enough of the teaching. They were devoted to it. And it was definitely a mark of the early church, their hunger for God's word, a foundation for their new lives in Christ. Now this is, and I cannot emphasise this enough, this is still a mark that we should find and see in every Christian congregation, wherever it is, including, of course, us. The New Testament is simply for us the apostles' teaching. Everything in the Bible is God's breathed out words to us. Here we find eternal truth. Here we find, we see Jesus. Now, what a joy it is to hear God speak through his word. Many of you listening will be able to recall times when you've read the Bible and God has spoken to you. When you've heard a sermon and God has spoken to you as though you were the only person there. When you've been in home group and something has become really clear to you from God's word. It's a joy and God speaks through his word. But the word of God is under great challenge in these days. So it's even more vital that we are devoted to knowing God's truth that is there. And not only knowing it, but accepting it, being committed to it and be willing to stand up for it. And so it is to be a mark of us in these days that we know, love and learn God's word. And this leads me to my next heading, which is 
that they were devoted to worshipping God. So look at the mark of the early church in verse 43. And awe came on every soul. Awed by the things that they were seeing God doing and things that they were hearing. And they were in awe. The temple sacrifices were no longer needed because Jesus had become the once and for all sacrifice. In awe, their sin was forgiven. The promised Holy Spirit was with them. In awe, the promises made by God through the centuries have been realised in Jesus. And the early church are described as having glad hearts, as a people praising God. But how do we see their worship expressed in these verses? Certainly it was something that they joyfully experienced together as a group. And it's something we see happen formally and informally. In verse 42, it says that they were devoted to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So a mark of their life together was that they broke bread and prayed. Now, some translations say continually devoted. And when we're devoted to something or someone, it's never a, a random one off event or action. It's consistent. It's ongoing. It's a delight. It's a desire. We'd love to do it. And it is thought by most people who are writing about these verses that the breaking of bread does refer to the Lord's Supper, albeit in those times it would have been part of a larger meal. And in this way, they were formally worshipping God as they looked back to the cross, which wasn't far away, and looking forward to the time when Jesus would return. And it says that they were devoted to the prayers and the thought here is that it's some um, more formal prayer gatherings, maybe prayer services in the temple or like prayer meetings we have with first priority or uh, the women's prayer that we were able to have in the past. But groups of people praying together, praying in our home groups. And so we see them day by day attending the temple and worshipping God in this way. But when we look in verse 46, we see that they're devotion and their worship carried over to more informal events, breaking bread, no doubt prayer in their homes. Now over the past year, we as churches everywhere have been caused to think about worship in church and in our homes. How is our worship seen as a mark of our life together? And COVID-19 has greatly impacted on all of our formal and informal life as the people of God. And for many of us, this has been a really hard part of life, not being able to gather with God's people in person. But how amazing is it that God allows a pandemic to happen in these days of YouTube, of phones, of Zoom, of social media, because we have been able to worship God differently, uh, together but separately. And even uh, as we meet on Zoom, we're perhaps more in touch with each other for communion and for prayer. And it's a mark of God's church that we've seen that immediately our church doors closed, something that in the living memory we've not seen before. Worship began in so many and varied ways throughout our country. But this isn't what God wants. Because God wants a mark of his church, his people, for them to be seen, gathered together in person for learning, for worshipping. This is his normal, that we are there together with each other. So we must be praying for the safe reopening of our churches, uh, where it's safe to make sure that we are part of the reopening. Uh, praying when it's right for us individually to be back with our fellow Christians and just praying how and when we can be back in our small groups together and how we can be moving out into our community again. And this is God's ideal. This is what God wants us meeting face to face. And that is what his ideal is. But let's look at another mark of the early church. They were devoted to each other and to the community. 
And we see in verse 44 that they had all things in common. In verse 45, we see that they were generous, selling possessions and giving to all who had need. We see them breaking bread in their homes, uh, which points to hospitality. We see them alongside their devotion to God's word and worship, that they are outward looking, loving, caring, sharing towards each other and to those in the community outside. Now, those looking in from the outside would have heard the apostles speaking. They would have seen signs and wonders. They would have heard the witness of those who had repented and believed, who'd been cut to the heart and were added to the church. And they would have seen their love and their care, not only for each other, but for those on the outside in the community. And so no wonder we read in verse 43, all came on every soul, including some of those people who were looking in. And in verse 47, it says they had favour with all people. So people on the outside were looking in, seeing these marks of this early church and were thinking, were wondering, were being moved by the Holy Spirit to see what was going on. And what happened? Perhaps the greatest mark of the early church happened as a result of the marks that we've been considering. All of these working together so that, it says, the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. And we must say that it is the Lord who did this. He opened the eyes of those seeing and hearing the early church in action to see that Jesus, as we sometimes sing, is the only one who saves. But can we be encouraged in these days? We felt really restricted over the past year, maybe isolated. Some of our events and that we'd planned in reaching out to our community with the love of Jesus have had to be uh, postponed. But let's be encouraged as the words of an old song say, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So let me count a few of our blessings, a few of the marks of a Christian church, and maybe you can add more and maybe share them um, at Zoom Coffee later. We have the word of God in our hands and in our homes at all times. We can read it every day, whenever. We can hear and we have heard the Bible taught every week. And uh, through our home groups in different ways, we've still carried on learning and worshipping in this way. We've been able to worship through YouTube, we've learnt lots of new songs. Uh, we have cared, we have loved, we have prayed, we've been concerned for each other and for those in our communities and for those further afield. And the Lord has added to the number of his church day by day. And there will, I think, be lots of stories once that we're back in our church communities face to face. But you see, new people have joined our children and family services when we've opened the church, new people have come to church. And so we have much to be thankful for. But may the mark of St Michael's Church be that we know at this moment that the Lord has done great things for us and is doing great things for us. And we are glad. So just let's reflect for a moment on things that we've heard thought about and read in this part of the Bible and then I will pray. O oh God our Father we pray that we gathered together today will be those who love and know your word, be those who worship you with sincere and glad hearts, be those who are generous, loving and caring and will you O oh God Add to our number those who are being saved through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer. 
Our final hymn today is about Jesus Christ in the way he is the word of God and he is God. So let's join in with You're the word of God the Father. nearly at the end of another wow session and uh, my thanks go to all those who've uh, contributed to the service to the technical people to those who've actually spoken on it if you are watching in live time you're welcome to join in with the uh, zoom coffee at 11 o'clock Sunday morning now just let's finish with some thoughts and a prayer. Give to your servants, O God, a quiet confidence in your ability to bring about the good things you have promised. Give us courage to attempt great things in your service Give us faith to expect great things from your grace. And give us patience to wait for your time. Amen. And may God the Father keep us in his care. The Lord Jesus be our constant friend. And the Holy Spirit guide us in all we do. Now and always. Amen.